There it is. Likely story. There it is. I still don't see it. Oh, no, it's up. It's up. It's up. It's up. It's up. I still don't see it. I'm taking my clothes off. It's up. Ooh. I mean, my sweatshirt. Ooh. 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 It, it. it says we're live. It says we're live. But there's no picture, Andrew. What are you talking about? I see it. The future is here. Anyways, it's here, so we can start. I see it now. Oh, yeah. See, you late. You're late to well, the party. Well, it's just the, the PC is just not working today. Thanks, Internet. So, this is Patch Notes, and it's time for Patch 511. That's, that's hype. That's the hype. You're supposed to hype. That is... This is the patch with the changes that nobody wanted. Yes, this is that patch. So, it's Patch 511. And what we're going to do is go over the patch, and, I mean, really, the only difference is we're just trying this live, because it's fun. It, it brings new life to the show. We did it last week, kind of, <laughs> I think is the best way to put it. We did it last week, a week late. A week, so. Yeah, last week, a week late, live. It was more of a trial run, a little test. And, yep. yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the way it works. So, let's do that patch. Let's do it. 5.11. We're going to cover the patch, let you know what's important. Tell you about the big changes, tell you what is important, what isn't important, although most of this patch is a lot of what isn't important. Not important. important. Wow. Well, it's well. the right champions, just not the right things. Not the right stuff. Yes. But we'll talk about that. So let's jump to combat text tuning. The first thing. Um, critical strikes have had their motion, color, and icon adjusted to contrast more than regular damage text. We've done some polish and bug fixes for floating combat text as well. Um, Have you played today? I haven't, actually. This actually Is made all of my numbers really messed up. Oh, really? Like, my numbers are huge. My kills, my assists, my deaths, my CS. Ooh. Like, even the, like, attack speed and, like, attack damage and, like, you know, AP down in, like, your, like by your portrait. It's, yeah. like, so much bigger. It's... It, it doesn't screw anything up, but it's just like, it's noticeably different, and I don't enjoy it. So what you're telling me is bug report. I don't even think it's a bug. I think it's just... Oh, you just think it's crap. Like an un unintended consequence of whatever this is. Well, that's no good. So... Um, well, that's do, we have a, do we have an audio... Dis is this someone said an audio delay? I, I can't help them with that. I, everything's fine on my end. So it, it'd be the internet. <laughs> Are you checking? <laughs> yeah, and it's not. That's all right on my screen as yeah, well. Yeah, no, I mean, it's fine. Anyways, um, I, actually, I, I do like the ideas of having clarity between critical strikes, actually. I know it's not, like, terribly un, like, not obvious right now, but you remember, like, season two, crit strike was, like, enormous and, like, yeah. gr uh, it was red, I believe. Like, it was, it was really contrasted, and it's changed, but... Um, Hopefully this doesn't bother me, but you might just be weird. So you're welcome. I'm gonna go to champion changes though. The first off, we have a Aatrox. I'm not weird. Just when you get in the game, you'll see it. Okay. Just trust me. Maybe I'll agree. I'll tweet. I'll tweet at you. I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got Aatrox is next. His blood will now actually has a cooldown as the game progresses. I think this is actually a pretty smart thing to do because as things speed up, as the game continues onward with you know, diminishing cooldowns for people's ultimates and other abilities, it would make sense that his passive would also catch up to the rate of flow of which the game is going. So having, you know, a shorter cooldown on your passive makes it way more important for a team fight that may have started, you know, 30 seconds sooner than it previously did. So I think this actually uh, kind of helps him a lot, although the rest of him still probably needs a little bit of help. Yeah, he's still not... He doesn't still like he still doesn't fit the tank meta of the jungle and he's not a good top laner, so Yeah. He's still just kind of Magoo. <laughs> Magoo. Magoo is the best, like he doesn't match up to other top laners. He doesn't do what the other top laners do. And in order to do any damage with him, you have to bolt him full damage, and you can't do that because they'll just get popped. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm kinda surprised he doesn't fit a little bit right now, but after a few little tweaks and nerfs since he did see a lot of play over in Europe. That's kind of has kind of ruined him a little bit. Still fun, but not as yeah, not yeah. As it's just, it's it's one of those things where like 
I play him occasionally in the top lane, but that's just more because I'm in the mood to play him, not because I'm like super try hard for that game. So yeah. Yeah. this doesn't change that. Yeah, I mean, I still play an enjoyable champion if I find them enjoyable just for the sake of playing them. Just because something's not an OP pick. like That's why you pick Teemo and Mordekaiser. Yep. How did you know? So because many... I play with you. I don't. I haven't played Teemo in a million years. Mordekaiser, <laughs> you can call me out on. Although Mordekaiser's strong, so <laughs> calling it. Anyways, next we do have Ash. They have changed her recommended items. They've updated it, so hooray for that, I guess. Whatever. Um, next, though, we have a Q which is Ranger's Focus. The five stack flurry attack no longer triggers on attacks against t turrets, which, which is good. Which is a, yeah, which is a good thing. It shouldn't have done it in the first place is what I'm kind of hearing from Riot, like that the, it was kind of an unintended consequence as well. But like if they fix it, it shouldn't really change her a lot. Like yeah. she's still going to do the same things well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on her uh, W, which is her volley, uh, the damage on that is being decreased at earlier ranks, and it's going to scale the same. Um, it has good poke potential in lane. I don't this even before her change in her rework, she always had good poke with this. Um, but they're going to nerf it a little bit because she has more things to rely on now, like with Ranger's focus and other things. So I don't think this is actually as huge of a hit. It's a little bit unfortunate, I will say. But um, luckily with the Ash rework, she's a champion that went from not as fun to play to more fun to play and more consistent to play as well so it's a quality of life change for other adcs yet still keeping ash fun which is great it just you know small tweak on the damage at very early ranks and then on the hawk shot the radius uh while traveling is down 500 so uh yeah pretty much there's really nothing to say the change ranger focus volleys a slight damage like debuff in the beginning but it's actually just more of useful for like the auto attack reset because you can auto like auto volley auto really quickly and so it's just kind of gives it that op factor um especially when you're talking 80 carries only have what 500 health to start so it's a good change um but i don't think a lot of people will see a huge difference in it because it'll still do that auto attack reset and then hawk shot who cares yeah yeah i mean although i do like the new hawk shot it is much better than old hawk shot but Except oh yeah. Well, I missed I missed the gold, but besides it's, that, <laughs> it's more useful in like organized team like LCS or like well, just like team like team oriented yeah. things, not in solo queue. In solo queue it's kind of you use it for your own advantage, yeah. not for the team advantage. Yeah, it is helpful to check so. jungle path and where they could be if you can get that shot across the jungle across like all the camps. You know, when you're close to attacking turret, you can shoot it up through the jungle and see them at... You can see almost every camp, see what's been reset and where they might be, which is kind of nice um, for personal information. Also good for your team, too, just the mini-map. It's a good mm -hmm. update, but yeah, like you said, it benefits team that actually can coordinate and talk a little bit more, so... Yep. For sure. Uh, next, we do have Brand, who has a brand new thing on his ultimate. Um, see what I did there? It's terrible. Did it. Um, if Pyroclasm's original target becomes untargetable during its travel time, it will seek a different target rather than just fizzing out on the spot, a.k.a. if it hits somebody with Hourglass, it's not going to happen anymore and just count as a bounce. It's going to go to something else. So it'll like change mid and go to something it's else. It's actually a huge change because yeah. like most of the time the other AP mid laner is going to be one of the squishier targets on the team most of the time. So it's going to be one of those champions that you want to get multiple hits off on that Pyroclasm. And if you just Zanya's it, you basically negate all of Brand's damage. So huge change. Um, I still don't think he's in a great spot, but I, I, it's, it's a much needed change. I don't like him as a mid laner anymore. He still can do damage, but he's just way too vulnerable. It's the same thing that happened with like Zyra too. Like still has plenty of damage and works, but Zyra moved to support successfully. Bran has had a harder time. I did make a support Bran um, guide, a, not actually that long ago. And I actually really enjoy him down there. He has a lot of range to work with, and that's actually a lot of harass on ADCs and other supports. So I think he actually does fit down there okay. He's like that weird like support carry thing. Once again, you're not like full on support. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm bringing damage to every fight. Hooray. So and you're I basically think like, it works. like a poor man's version of Annie. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. It's what it is. And it's really fun to play, but he hasn't had as many range nerfs as Annie, so he can still work at greater distances. So the one thing down there is he does eat his mana a little bit, 
So be careful with that. But besides that, I, I think he's fun down there. So if you want to play Brand again, try him out in the support role. I think it does work. So that's my little side note, and which is helpful too for that. So Also, he can use his ult on two people in the bot lane, which is just more beneficial in my opinion. So. Um, Caitlyn is next. Um, actually, a really big change in my opinion that I love <laughs> um, is... <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Passive... Uh, for her headshot, now ignores 50% of the target's bonus armor. I think this is going to help Caitlyn be even more significant in that late game, where she already is good. But I think this kind of cements her a little bit more for that late game AD. You know, like another solid late game AD. Because ignoring 50% of a target's bonus armor, this affects everybody. Like, it, it just, it's, it's, just, it's just better damage for her. Like, that's all it is. She still does what she always has done in pushing tur like pushing objectives really well, but that's basically like in the super tank meta that like we're in right now, she basically does nothing late game. Uh like if you can get to it like you you're gonna get soloed by almost any tank with any armor. So this should really, really help that and I understand why they put it in there. But they still like she's still going to be primarily for that objective pushing. Um she's still not a fantastic team fight AD carry. Like mm -hmm. she's not a hyper carry yet. No. So um, still pretty good. She'll she's what she does. She does very well, and I think that's nice to have champions like that in the league. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Yordle snap traps also seen a change. Its arm time is going to be standardized to 1.1 seconds. It used to vary between one and 1.25 fixed a bug where certain dashes could pass over the traps without triggering the root which is also a good fix because that's annoying because that's what they do shen <laughs> yep shen dashing through and then um her ace in the hole now gives vision at start of cast instead of at start of channel okay so that's a little clarity there so that is caitlin now next we're seeing changes to echo i think me and you'll probably have a little bit to talk about on this champion um, Echo, first off, his base movement speed is going to be decreased by 5. On his W, which is his convergence, the mana cost on that is being increased by 20 at early ranks and then scaling to 70 instead of starting at 30 and scaling to 70. So it's going to cost more to actually use. And then it's going to grant vision 2 seconds after it's been cast. A lot of people have actually been using this to check bushes and anything else, just casting it into a zone where enemies might be and just getting free vision quick without really having to commit too much to it because you're going to probably max this out last. So 30 mana for a free um, CV is pretty cheap, really. And then on his Chrono Break, uh, increased the visibility of Echo's time clone following Echo for the enemy team, which I think is probably pretty good because I would agree that the visibility of this was kind of crap a little bit. So um, it's like Riot was baiting enemies to dying a little bit almost. But... Overall, I think this is a good start for Echo. He hasn't been around that long, and I know we've seen certain people excel with him. I have played a bit of Echo myself and found him do stupid amounts of damage in some cases and interesting damage in others. I also found him to be incredibly squishy because he kind of is incredibly squishy. He is an assassin. Um, the other thing I will say is I've played against a ton of of Echo, because that's all there's been in the mid lane, and I've been playing a lot of, uh, what's that champion, Orianna, who I'm not sure if she's great against him, honestly, like the ball's helpful, but you're so mana heavy early that it's kind of unfortunate at the same time. So all I'm trying to say is I've played against a lot of Echoes, and I've seen ranges of people who kind of know what they're doing to people who don't, and I think there's not enough sample yet for me to decide. I don't think he is super, super OP. I think he's definitely got some incredibly strong things in his kit, but I think it's how people have been executing it, making it look way better than it is or isn't, and people who are just terrible not doing anything with it. So I, I'm, I'm actually a little bit in the middle grounds on him. I, I think you think he's, like, yeah, I think well, he's broken. I understand the W change. The, the two seconds after, after cast makes a lot of sense because they're basically using it like a CV, like you said, and with a jump and then dash that has no counterplay to it at all, it's, it's one of those things where like, you would be, like, be in a bush and be ready to pounce on him, and he would just like basically CV it, and then auto kill you. And I don't know if you watched the Challenger series of VU yesterday, or was it yesterday or two days ago, but Echo one-shotted Ash with his ulti. Like I don't mean like his, he hit her a couple times yeah. and then he one-shot her. I mean he, he only used his ultimate and killed her, so, and yeah. then he like basically used his 
his E and then Q Janna and killed her. So it's just like no champion should be quite that. that yeah. Quite, quite. No champion should be able to press one button and kill someone, no matter how how hard it is to hit. Like, yeah, it's just it's just dumb to me. Let's, like they somebody mentioned his scaling, so let's talk about his scaling for a split second. Okay, so he has his, what one point three on his ulti. It should be like point seven. His ulti scaling is. I think it's one point three. Yeah, it's it's one hundred and thirty percent, and its base yeah. damages are two hundred, three fifty, and five hundred. So. 500 plus 130 percent of 800 damage you know 800 a ap is it's like 2000 damage by the time everything's all said yeah done. like that is Without, a and lot. you're gonna have a, you're gonna have some form of pen in there you know so the penetration like the magic assist really doesn't, doesn't matter. matter yeah and you you shouldn't force ad carries to build a magic resist item because one person can hit you once and kill you now that's that's bad for the game. I agree, but the, the one th the, so the reasoning behind 130 percent AP is there's counterplay to his ultimate being you can see where it should be. You know, like sometimes sometimes if he's is he, if he's visible, then his clone is visible. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing to do with him is obviously build hourglass, get yourself caught on purpose slightly. Everybody stands on top of you and just alt yourself. And you will blow everyone. It's actually hilarious. It works really well. But I think they need to tune back. You're right with the uh, the uh, damage. The yeah, the scaling on this. I actually think it heals about as much as it should. It, you know, it's not cr like full life instantly, but it is a decent healthy chunk depending on you know his scaling with that. But so his ultimate, I will agree, is the percentage that's crazy. Now I've heard other people talk about the scaling on his other abilities. His uh, his drive, his little dash, it only scales from twenty percent AP. That's really not. A crazy amount of AP scaling, and the active part of his time winder also scales from only twenty percent AP. That's once again not like crazy, but it's incoming coming back at sixty percent, which is higher. Obviously, I do agree, but I think a lot of people just think he has cr like crazy scaling. It's not like absurd. I think the crazy scaling is actually just on his passive. Well, it's not even that. You gotta you gotta add in what is available in the game. A lot of people first build Lich Bane and the reason that E is broken is because it's basically an auto an auto set and an auto dash to your target with a Lich Bane proc. Yeah. Like it activates your Lich Bane proc when you hit someone. So basically you can half-life anybody just by using one ability. And the reason that I don't like Gecko is because he has too he's like Thresh was when he first came out. He has too much of everything. He has a shield, he has a heal, he has three dashes. Because he activates E, and then he can teleport, and then he has his ultimate. So three dashes, kind of, yeah, like kind of. three modes to move around the map great distances. And he has, an, like, did I say AoE stun? He has that stupid slow on his Q. They could literally take off the slow on his Q, and it wouldn't do anything. I think they could get rid of the shield and take off the stun part and just increase the slow. And take off the, like, there's no point for, like, he does 1.3 scaling on his ulti, and he gets health back for that. So... Why does he do so much freaking damage and heal so much? I I understand like the idea behind him, but the person who made this champion also made a whole bunch of the other super broken champions when they came out. Like he came out with Yasuo, he came out with Vi. Like this person just needs to just relax when he's doing these numbers. He needs when to they... calm the fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same guy that made all of these champions. Did he make his ear? Like, oh my god! Is this, um, is this a zero guy? I don't think he made a zero. Okay. <laughs> but like Yasuo, I know he made Yasuo. I know he made Vi, and those two champions when they first came out were like, not like Echo, but just like bonanzas. Yeah, no, Yasuo was absurdly bonanza. Everybody was bad with him at first though, and they thought he was actually kind of weak. And then once people figured out a couple things, they're like, oh, hey, look, he can one shot everyone with his ultimate. Yep. And get shielded while doing it. <laughs> yep. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see more, and I want to see, obviously, I want to see more from actual competitive play to see what actually happens with them, too, a little bit. Because I want to see how people can effectively shut him down. Because we saw Bard be a pointless, worthless champion. He got one or two small ner or tweaks that did help him significantly, and now he's getting banned. Like, but that was, once again, a player thing. So I think the ca there's counterplay to Echo, though. So, Because um, the one thing about a new champion is you're not exactly sure how to play him or play against him. So most of the time, people just try to focus the new champion for the sake of getting him off the map so um uh, or because he's gonna kill your whole team well there's that too but you know you just got you got a deal you just kill him or yeah. ban him just, just ban him 
Um, yeah, next. Hecarim. 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 Um, on his passive, which is his warpath, uh, update cycle is going to be 0.25 seconds instead of 1. And then on his E, which is his devastating charge, it's going to stack additively with other movement speed bonuses instead of stacking multiplicatively <laughs> with other movement speed bonuses. That was a stretch. So, Kyle, break it down for the people. <laughs> when he comes out of teleport with home guards, he won't kill you in one shot. There it is. Saved it. Got it. Nailed it. I'm so, probably... good change because Top Hecram is really, really, really strong. Uh, but I think he'll still be really strong. Well, he'll, he'll still do the same things well. Like, he's good at ganking. Yeah. Um, with that teleport harm guard, um, he's very very tanky when he when he's built like that. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of he's kind of I don't know if he'll be picked over like Nar and like the tree now. Uh, but he won't be an instant ban like he is in LCK right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's a good champion. I, I think it's. Well, multiple things in his kit. He can bully lane quite well, but his alt is decent game changer for absolutely breaking a team's coordination and front line. So, yep. um, but fun champion. I've always been a big fan. Um, skipping over Jace because somebody's excited about him in the comments or in the chat. So we'll just skip over Jace and go straight you to Cat. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, Jace is seeing um, some significant changes this patch. And the significant change would be you no longer put points into your ultimate. Instead, it will automatically upgrade itself, you know, with little power spikes at level 6, 11, and 16 where other champions get power spikes. So he can fit the curve with those champions a little bit better. So to make up for those three points missing, he will now get an extra point in each of his abilities, his Q, his W, and his E. So everything has six points instead of five points, which is kind of cool, kind of nice. Kind of interesting. Now, the big thing to take away from this, besides that initial front-end change, where he has new spikes at those levels and six points, is his Q actually is getting a decent buff, in my opinion. Obviously, you have to put one more point into it to get to it, but you do get a buff from it. Because it's going to... Well, not necessarily take more levels to get to it, but, you know, it's got an extra point to get to it. So, base damage, instead of it being 200, or 20 to 200, it's 30 to 230. And then cooldown on it is going to go from 16 to 6. One more, you know, two seconds. Basically, if you just look at it, there's one more added on, and it just scales up the, the appropriate amount of which it's scaling with. So the slow being increased to 55% on, on that sixth point. Uh, same thing, obviously, too, with the uh, shock blast of it. So 70. Actually, base damage on that all across the board is going up. So instead of 60 to 280, it's 70 to 320. So he's getting more damage on that in general. Same thing's happening, too, with Lightning Field. Um, scaling is a little bit different, actually. If you look at it, instead of 100 to 380, you get 100 to 400, but you uh, skip 170 at rank 2 and you get 160, and then instead of 240, you get 220. It just scales differently to 400. It's going to be more later, but actually slightly less on inch, each individual spike. Um, you see similar things happening to that, too, as well when it comes to the uh, hyper charge of the W. Um, so look out for that. And then Thundering Blow, once again. Similar things happening here. The scaling is tweaked percentage number-wise as it scales up to maximum health. It's actually going to still keep it at 20%. It's just going to scale differently throughout. And the seconds of it are actually going to be longer at first because there's one extra added to it. Acceleration gate, similar, 55% from 50. Transform fusion form, blah, 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 blah. Lots of talking. Jace, I'm good. Your turn. <laughs> um, Jace is in a kind of a weird spot because he doesn't really fit the like hyper assassin like mid lane like you see a lot of leblancs He's uh, in the mid lane and then he doesn't fit like the insane wave clear like ziggs or zareth so i think i personally think that he's really really good yeah. like in solo queue and stuff and anytime you get these kind of buffs on a champion it's going to be for the best so in solo queue i think he's going to be one of those champions that you can carry very easily with. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect us to have nerfs to him in the upcoming patches just because this is a little ridiculous um, for the most part. But, like, in terms of LCS play, um, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of Jaces running around except for if it's in the mid lane. Yeah, I, I want I, the one thing I want to see him uh, maybe do in the mid lane is 
fight up against uh, Varus. Because Varus is coming out as a, as a pseudo poke, you know, champion along with Kogma. Kogma is obviously a little bit stronger, but Varus has interesting capabilities that Kogma doesn't have, such as a big ultimate that can root everyone. But Jace kind of fits that poke style of a champion. He's a poke champion. I mean, he was ran in a lot of poke, or run in a lot of poke comps with like Nidalees in the jungle and other things of the like. I was actually watching an old SKT game today and they were running an old poke comp and I was like, what happened to Jace in the poke comps? Like, he disappeared without really seeing any significant hardcore nerfs. Like, he just doesn't fit right now. So, I'm, I want well, to see him emerge again. He actually got hit pretty hard right after, I think I remember like around what you're talking about. But they changed tiers, so when you changed forms that was from right. ulti yeah, yeah. to like from melee to range form, it wouldn't stack the tier anymore. So that that hit him pretty hard because you could yeah. basically get a finished man immune like way fast twenty minutes into the game. Yeah. Like I so, just it's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So so they, uh, they slowed down his scaling on that at least, but yeah, I still and, don't think that should completely kill off a champion. But when you but when you hit that man immune like power spike it when is. you. But it transforms. It's huge. Like it's huge. Yeah. Like that's that's the difference between being tickled by Ezreal and being just annihilated by Ezreal. So yeah. In my opinion, that did it. But there's also a lot of other things. The meta shifted away from yeah. poke comps um, because they changed Nidalee. Yep. And Nidalee was like the queen of poke. So well, it's poke kind of <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of just one of those things where. The, the meta changed, and he got nerfed at the same time, so he just completely fell off. Yeah, and poke comps against tank teams will just come in and initiate on you and engage. They're not going to put up with just poke. So, um, yeah, I but, want to see him back. I, I think he's, like I said, I think he's going to be really good in solo queue. Um, just probably not seen in, like, highly competitive LCS matches just yet. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 And I'm always down for what we're about to talk to next. Next, we're talking about Cotton. Katarina. Katarina Shunpo. Base damage being reduced at earlier ranks. Still scaling to the same. And the ability power ratio on it is being taken down from 0.4 to 0.25. Um, I maxed this out last on Katarina, and usually at that point they've already surrendered. <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> Like I said, it's not a huge deal, but anytime we can get cat nerfs, I'm all for cat nerfs just because there's two points in a Katarina game. Either she gets fed early and she, you quit, or like you surrender, or she the game lasts long enough and she does enough damage just by passive accruance of gold, and she kills her whole team. So I Katarina is one of those anti-fun champions when she gets to that like scary point, but the the uh, Luden's Echo nerf that we're about to talk about also helps with her Bonanza's like snowballing ability. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Anytime Cat gets nerfed, I'm mean, all for it. I'm fine, but I don't really care. It does I, I don't think that's hardly affecting anybody. So. <laughs> but yeah, it is a nerf. So. Um, what? It's not gonna affect me. Yet. I'm kidding. So I'm, we're good. We good. Um, Kha'Zix is next. Uh, as I said in his first build video, taste their feel. Isolation radius going down from 500 to 425. Um, I don't play Kha'Zix. Do you play Kha'Zix anymore? I don't play Kha'Zix anymore. I don't really play Kha'Zix right now, um, but this is a huge, huge deal. Like, anytime you can get people isolated more often than not, like... It's always good for the champion. It's still not to what it was, where it was like, what was it, like 300 or something? Yeah. And then they changed it. Yeah. yeah. So, it's always good. Yeah. Because uh, he's in a bad spot right now. Yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, this, this meta is definitely not super kha'zix -y. So. Yep. Later on, bud, later on. Next we have the bitch getting some nerfs this patch. Oh, I love LeBlanc. Oh, dude, I like LeBlanc too. <laughs> She's still a bitch. Uh, uh, uh. Um, so we're seeing a handful of things happen, and it's because of Bjergsen. So uh, it's not just because of Bjergsen. It's because LeBlanc's legit strong. Um, and people are like, well, all they seem to do is nerf her. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of true, but they nerf everybody else around her, and she still is emerging as a very strong champion. So um, on her W, the distortion missile speed on that is going to be decreased by 300, slowing her down a little bit. On her chains, 
the missile width is going to be thinner, meaning if you're going to miss, it's actually going to miss you instead of hitting people that it shouldn't hit. Because sometimes, man, those hit people, and I, the, they were sailing wide right for a mile, and I don't know how it hits people. So um, that's good. So I'm glad that they're going to do that. They're also fixing and checking things. The target has broken the tether um, and fixed a bug where the chains would fizzle on like Black Shield, even if it broke it. Just some weird stuff there. Um, same thing obviously happening to those on the Mimic um, Ultimate as well. So when you Mimic those abilities, same thing's being applied. So um, less fast and less thickness. So basically, this is the, we like where LeBlanc's damage is at, but we want you to actually have to be like not a complete derp to play the champion. Um, the ethyl chain, ethyl chain is actually a super important part because a lot of people, if you just walk up and QRW somebody, yeah, it's going to do a shit ton of damage, but like for the most part, like not how you want to combo. Yeah, um, and you'll usually need to proc your next Q with a chain. Yeah, exactly. Well, like because people who can't hit chains usually just QRW, yeah. and so this will make it so like that still works. But you're not going to kill, like, most people with that unless you're just insanely fed. So um, this will make the good LeBlanc players... This won't affect the good LeBlanc players, but the bad LeBlanc players who can't hit chains will struggle. Yeah. So I'm... Like, this is a skill change, and I'm always for skill changes, especially when it's, like, just, like, lane-crushing champions like LeBlanc is. Yeah, and, and LeBlanc can get to a position in lane two where uh, if she does get a little bit ahead, she has a dominant stance in lane. They were calling Azir LeBlanc a skill-based matchup, but LeBlanc kept running away with it because she would get that slight advantage because it's a little bit easier to get it with her over Azir, and she would continue to hold on to it. Now, if you do get that advantage with LeBlanc, it will be harder to keep with these, I think at least because your chains are a little bit thinner, like you move a little bit slower when you distort. These little things open up counterplay as well for other people, so... Because if you were to dodge that that chain, that 15 extra missing w might be enough for you to not get hit by the chain, get binded, and die. Like, that's big counterplay for you to turn around, let's say, as Azir, knock her up, and then send some dudes into her face and kill her. So, it opens up counterplay, too. So Yep. Love it. It's a good change. I like it. So, next is Malphite with his brutal strikes. And what they're going to do on this, actually, is... Passively, you're going to gain additional armor based off a percentage. Actively, your basic attacks deal additional damage and seals from ability power of physical damage to targets and nearby units. So they're swapping basically around the passive and the active. Yep. And that's pretty much the big thing they're doing right there. They, when they took out the, what was it, Deathfire Grasp, they tried, they reworked a whole bunch of champions that used Deathfire Grasp and Malphite was one of those champions and they never touched him. This isn't a huge change to that, but it will help. Um, it will help AP Malphite. So it's all right. Not yeah. great, but it just, I like, I like diversity in the league. Everybody builds the same things on the same champions. And so this is just one of those things that you'd like to run, a uh, uh, run across every once in a while. Or, like, even play every once in a while. And I think that this actually helps him out um, as a tank. Yep. Because passively, he's always going to keep that armor. Instead of when it was active, he would gain armor yep. and attack damage. So he'll passively always have that instead of only having it when he can activate it in a fight. So as a tank malfight, it's also just going to help you out to be even tankier. So... Um, kind of nice. That is where I'm going with that. Uh, next, we have Oriana with her ultimate, Command Shockwave. The cooldown upon outranging the ball. Instead of 0.5 seconds, it's going to be 0.75 seconds. I don't play Oriana. You're, you're on an Oriana kick. You take it away. So, it's actually pretty simple. This increased cooldown only affects Shockwave when the ball returns to Ori as a result of it out of, like, ranging it. Meaning uh, you're, like, less likely to accidentally ult on top of yourself. Gotcha. So, it's actually a good thing. Yeah. Because, well, you know how many people I've seen, I, 
As of recently, like I've, do, I've done it, it comes once. Back to him and yeah. does nobody. Yeah, I hate yeah. that. God, it sucks so much. I did it once recently, and I was like, "No way!" It was still in the. And I was like, "Whatever game." Um, yeah, it just feels stupid when that happens. So, kind of nice to be honest. Next are the changes that Kyle's most excited about. Uh, Rise. Not. Not these ones. Not the, these are not the changes I am looking for. I was just going to say that. <laughs> um, so, Rise, passive, they fixed a bug where Rise can use W and E on a dying target to build passive stacks without completing the spell cast. So, big, or big, using mana. big fix. Yeah, or using mana. So, big fix for Rise. It's going to nerf him into the ground. He's he's over. This is Rise meta's out. Get Get him out. He's done. For all the people that don't kind of can't really sense the underlying tones of our conversation right now, <laughs> Rise is, along with Echo, probably like if oh, Echo was he's... out for like another month and he doesn't get changed, they'll be on the same level. But okay. like Rise is very, 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 very strong right now. He's an instant ban yeah. if he's if you're playing ranked. Yeah. Like if you have any skill with Rise at all, you can just destroy games it's the chain roots you just chain yep. root somebody in place they'll just throw a shit in their face you're just like guess what you don't get to go anywhere yep. and you're dead along with all your friends thanks for coming enjoy the game yep um it's, it's, it's not what needed to be done but yeah they're yeah. trying they're working on it right now in fact the changes as of right now that are in the pve are like uh, is, is desperate nerf? power is reverted back to six seconds instead of four, which it got the nerf. You know, it got changed last patch. The Q passive on like his arcane mastery on, on overload um, is going to like sixty percent to a hundred, down from a hundred and five up to a hundred and twenty-five. And like his cooldown reduction on rune prison, instead of being um, twenty-four at all ranks, I think that scales differently now. And the spell flex mana cost is. Uh, I think it's lowered, but the cooldown... I don't know. They're, they're, they're changing things. Basically... We can get there next patch. He's, get, he's getting nerfed. I'm just saying. People, I think, want it. So, you want it. I... They... Honestly, I don't see Rise that much just because he's banned all the time. But, like, if he's... If, if the champion is this broken, especially if you have a competitive scene and you're worried about your competitive scene, or, like, yeah. you care at all, you should just disable a champion like rise i was wondering if they'll do that this week i actually know that they will not yeah i didn't think they were but i would wonder if but like might. it's it's something that they actually talked about and if you have to talk about it you should just do it and then like what does it hurt to disable rise like basically you're giving first pick teams a disadvantage kind of yeah because or like or second team picks advantages because they don't have to instant ban rise they actually get three targeted bans so they're actually it just makes sense to me i hope that they just erase this champion because we talked about it last time and they have done he gets really really strong and then they nerf him and nerf him and nerf him and nerf him and then they change him and then he's really really strong and then they nerf him and nerf him and nerf him and nerf him so just get him to a spot like vladimir where he's a very niche pick and he's relatively weak and just leave him yes perfect just I, it's so hard though because when the meta shifts it takes him with it and it, ugh, i know it's pain this is what we well, deal it did with. that with vladimir as well but like vladimir just phased out because the tank meta changed that's so like that's true if there's a change in meta and he fits that meta great when the meta shifts then it'll go away from him. Like, that's what I think a champion should be. Like, you're always going to have strong champions. You're gonna, always going to have weak champions. But these these people that, like, crush games are just getting kind of ridiculous. It's like old school Cassidy, and it took time. But I think they actually did get to him to a more appropriate, more consistent spot. In my opinion. I think yeah. that one actually did work. Rise needs to find that. And I think it will come with, I hate to say ability changes, but, like, actual significant ability change. I don't think numbers will just get it there person yeah so um next on the list is says Juani. her changes from the previous patch will go into effect on this patch wait what yeah yeah remember when she was getting her northern winds oh so now they're actually now so now it's gonna work. just like we might do this or like we're going to do this <laughs> yeah. but we're gonna put it in the patch but we're not gonna do it until late okay yeah great 
Uh, poop on Sejuani. There no it is. more of that crap. Which is funny because she's so she's getting nerfed, and I haven't actually seen her as much lately. It's just a bunch of Gragas now, and uh, Gragas is, isn't in Rexai, here. Yeah. and not in here. Who's the other one? Gragas, Rexai, Evelyn. I don't know. What do you? <laughs> There's another power jungler. I can't remember. Um, it might be Sejuani. It probably, I, give up. I think it's Sejuani. Anyways, next we actually have um, maybe some of my favorite changes this patch. Shen. Shen, in general. I love Shen. I love Shen. Uh, basic or base magic resistance is being increased a little bit by 2.1. And the magic resistant growth stat is actually going to have one now <laughs> instead of not having one. Um, instead of zero, it's 1.25. Now, passive on his Kai strike cooldown. Instead of 9 seconds, it's actually going to scale down to um, 9, 8, 7 seconds. And when he hits levels 1, you know, obviously at the beginning, 7 and 13. And then the biggest thing I love about this is his E, which is his shadow dash. Instead of it costing 100 energy at each rank, it actually will decay down to 80, which is a pretty huge deal because if you miss your dash so you, so you don't get any other refund, you literally have half of your energy Gone. The entire fight. Yeah. Yep. You can't do anything else. Because that is like the bread and butter of this kit in a team fight. What's he going to do? Throw a Q and then shield and be like, hey guys, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your tank. I mean, just. He doesn't do anything then. Give me some energy to do something with. Uh, you might see him pop up with these changes against, like, as like a counter to the tree. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, Nar is still so prevalent that Shen just gets destroyed by Nar. He gets kited so, so badly. Yeah, and the, the base magic resistance is going to obviously help quite a bit. So um, mm -hmm. I think that you might see him pop up every once in a while as like a niche pick, yeah. but he won't be like a ban worthy or anything like that. There's no Shen mains in the world. Yeah, not anymore. Quality of yeah. life, though, just for playing him, if you're going to be playing him, just so much better, though. Because that, like, seriously, that would be such a nice difference, like... I don't know why it took so long to just like seriously give him that little bit because that wouldn't make him super overpowered. What was super overpowered was the how short his cooldown was on his ultimate and like that way back in the day was the big one and then they nerfed that like to four minutes, which was <laughs> crazy. But yeah, needed yep. to help out other parts of his kid if he's gonna not be have a, as much of a global impact. So uh, next we have Shivana, her W, which is her burnout. Now it does 25% of Burnout's AoE damage per basic attack for the duration. It fixed a bug where Burnout had twice its bonus attack damage ratio only while in dragon form. So it's a buff. Yes. And, well, like, it's a buff if you don't get the bug. It's Yes. Well, it, because, they fixed it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, what I'm saying is... is like, I actually think Shivana's in a really good spot, especially in tank, like, jungle form, because you can just build Cinder Hulk, just go straight tank, and basically rely, rely on your E, um, which does percentage health. Uh, it's just that she struggles so much against, like, Rek'Sai and Gragas, because they're so aggro in the beginning, and she really can't counter that. She just has to hard farm, basically, until she finishes, like, an item. Um, but she's a lot better than those champions, in my opinion, in team fights. And she's not so a like CC it, machine, though. She is a she's more well, of a damage what I tank mean machine. Is, but but she's so much like she's honestly tankier than those people just because yeah. of her dragon form. Yeah. And then she applies the what is it two and a half health per basic attack yeah. debuff, which is really really nice because of the tank ish meta that mm -hmm. we have going on right now. So uh, I think that she's really strong in solo queue, especially. Uh, if she had, like, you can't give her CC, obviously, but, like, that's the only thing that she is lacking. Yeah, hard CC, yeah, I mean, she's got a knockback for her ultimate, that's it. Other than that, like, but that's that's why she does more damage than your typical tanks. Like, she has to have the those damage stats, or else she literally would be a Shen. Got him. Um, and that's really all she would be, but, like... Gragas can impact a uh, uh, carry so hard by knocking him up, knocking him back, and then just basically at that point they've been killed. You know. Well, if if Gragas gets to your AD carry and is able and without using his body slam, like the fight's not going how you want yeah. it to in the first place. Yeah. But so, so like what I what I mean is is she's the the two point five damage plus this basic attack like per basic attack like uh, damage, and then you have just a lot of AOE with her, and then 
tankiness is just through the roof. Like I think that she's really, really strong. Uh, she just kind of needs the right team comp around her, mm-hmm. uh, like a, almost like a self kiting eighty carry, um, like a Vayne or like someone who can move a lot, like a Lucian or something like that. Um, but like I said, she just struggles so much with early aggression that you can't really play her in people who actually know how to yeah. punish you for you it. You can't play her safely. So yeah. you, you sacrifice the safety. Um, but that's Shivana, so that's that's fine for now. I think she's in a good spot, too. Um, and then we have Sivir. So, big big thing to, to note with Sivir, and I talked about this actually in Badger's Picks since I recommended her to play if you don't play her. Um, it's her ultimate. Even if you do bad, you help everyone on your team do good. So, instead of its initial movement speed... Uh, burst duration being six seconds at rank three it's only going to be four seconds and it's going to be three seconds at rank two instead of four so it's not as engagey or disengagey or disengagey it's still good and still helpful and still you know really good but tag teaming this up with other people on your team with like righteous glories and just you your team was a crazy initiation forced to be recognized reckoned with with a six second initial movement speed burst like who can run from that nobody can so it's still going to be really good it's still going to be really helpful Uh, but this is a way to kind of nerf her and these really hard fast engage team compositions without actually hitting her numbers which should mean she's fine in lane still for all of lane phase and and things like that it's just teams will have a little bit less control than they already had at like big objectives and big skirmishes in in team fights. So Yeah, I agree, but at the same time, in my opinion, Sivir's not a great AD carry. Oh, like so you're well, I mean like you think she's fine because of her ultimate. Correct? No, I think she's fine cuz I I think she's actually okay as an AD carry just in general. I, she can push waves into people to hard like to make them farm under turrets so easily after one item. But it's it's relatively easy to farm under like if as long as you're not a like if you push like sneaky or double lift underneath their turret, they're not going to struggle to last hit. Like those guys know how to do that. No, I, so I know, but I'm just saying in general for the champion. And some yeah. ADCs obviously have a harder time farming under turret than others. It's that's true. But, but like what I'm saying is, is this is up and away her strongest part of her kit, like by a mile, her mm. most useful part of her kit. Yeah, I, I put it close to spell shield. That's pretty big for an AD carry. But like, you're. You're not spell shielding the whole team. No, I, I, I agree, but you're a big damage source for your team, so being alive is helpful. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it, my only. Like, that's to me, it's just like what makes Sivir Sivir. So no, I agree. By nerfing it, you're just decreasing her overall value, and I think that she won't be played anymore with this change. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. We shall see. It's just because Sivir Morgana bot just too OP. <laughs> God, I hate Sivir Morgana. Dude, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Two ways to shield yourself from spells. You can make it's Morgana like easy Lou, ult like everyone. Me first. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so hard to beat. Um, as for items, Luden's Echo has made its way into the patch, and they're doing this after letting Luden's literally not change for quite a while. They gave it a good testing period, I'd actually say, on the live um, state of the game. So the big thing to take away from this is Luden's Echo charges stack at a rate of 10 stacks per spell cast instead of 20. And then the ability power ratio is going to be 0.1 instead of 0.15. So this will take a little bit of power out of how often it procs and how hard it procs. I mean by a little bit. And I think these changes make sense because I think Luden's is a good item. And I think it's being overused on a few champions who don't actually get the most from it. I think this will actually make that official that you probably shouldn't get this right away on some of those champions. But it should still be fine on other champions that like really benefit from a Luden, such as like a Cassiopeia and a Kog'Maw and things like that, who actually really do benefit from the way it stacks and the way the damage works with Ludens. So um, not an enormous, enormous nerf. Substantial with the spell cast, but the movement is really where you're getting most of this coming in. Would you build Abyssal now f- before Luden's on, like, Cat? I don't build that, actually. Well, yeah. Mm, uh, mm, like, mm. F- most people build 
were building Ludens first. A lot of people were, and Ludens was really good. Abyssal I could see in a really hard matchup with like LeBlanc and things like that, like bursty matchups. Yeah. I think that's really situational. Well, like, I mean, you're, like your typical AP versus AP matchup. Like, because obviously you're not going to build Abyssal first if you're going against like Zed or something. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, no, that's not, yeah. Like, hmm. this you makes know, it, I feel, s s like kind of take some time to actually get going. May so, maybe a little bit, I do agree. Um, you know what I think it does, making this question very hard, is it opens diversity for builds for individual playstyle and preference. Because if you ask me, and I'm, I'm an unpopular choice at this now for it, is I know Ludens is technically probably the smart choice, or was a smart choice first on Cat. You know what I did? I have Rome, so I actually go Hourglass. I can break turret aggro on dives with my teammates. I can actually Zonya's a lot. Like I actually really like Hourglass first rush on Cat. Like That's a big one for me. So I think you actually open the book for four four core items on cat, right there off the bat with those three choices, and I think you can always throw death cap in because and it's crazy. and none of the ch like none of the options are a bad option like they're situational options yeah which I think is how the game hypothetically should be yeah read your lane see the situation you're in also look at enemy team composition and damage output from team you know if i was maybe thinking ludens first and then i jump into the match and i'm katarina and i'm like you know what they have a leblanc and they have a lease in the jungle and they actually have a top laner maokai who actually gonna do pretty good magic damage i'm gonna rethink this and probably switch off and actually do that abyssal because that's just gonna make more sense stat wise and money wise early and be way more beneficial because if i do get ganked I'm going to be able to actually resist that gank too, apart from being able to resist just my lane. So you always have to think situationally. Um, always. So, yeah. But, I, yeah, Luden should still be, honestly, still fine to build. So it's yeah. the only other item besides the other two that gives you 120 AP. It's a good way to get a lot of stats. So, and it's also pretty damn cheap in comparison to the other 120 yes. AP damage items. Yep. Next is the Twisted Tree Line and the Crystal Scar. We don't do that. We don't do that. Because it's just not. They're changing things. So yeah. you see this? The changes? Good. You can If you slow the video down, it might. Yep. Yep. They're still going. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Battle training. The loading screen for battle training has been updated. Good to know. Diamond 5 LP gains have been tweaked to actually give people in Diamond 5 some actual LP if they win a match. Uh, instead of 5 LP, because that's a problem. They had huge they cramping said. issues. Uh, I think it was running off the plat 1 MMR was the problem, so if you won a game, it was like not actually worth anything. <laughs> well, like, I got, I got to, like, I think I got placed Platinum 2 this season, and, like, I got to diamond relatively quickly and right when i hit diamond i was only getting like five to ten lp well there's a big problem with it first because Match. of because of the uh the at the original addition to um master tier cramped the how the mmr worked in it and it felt it in diamond five so they tried to fix that and this other fix will help correct that issue so yeah like it's not a big deal anymore obviously but no. like I don't know. It's. I think there should be cramping. Like as the season prolongs, there should be cramping, just because for people who've played enough games. Like if you've played three hundred games, you shouldn't gain as much as if you played thirty games. Yeah. Because like you have you're you're pretty close to where you should be by now, so it makes sense to cramp. But at the same time, it gets frustrating for people who don't think that they are where they should be. Yeah. So, I like it. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to the bug fixes. Azir soldiers no longer spam their attack animation while idle, which is helpful because that's really annoying. Um, Hyperdinger's turrets charge bars have been moved back down to their correct position. Fixed edge cases with Gromp buff, Cinder Hulk aura, and the jungle item damage over time prop. We're killing large monsters instead of leaving them at one health. That's actually not helpful at all for people trying to get buffs. Um, Murder mana no longer consumes mana while attacking wards. It's a good change. What? what do you mean that doesn't help for people give buffs? They won't. They won't kill them anymore. No. It, yeah, I know. It was. That so wasn't it'll, helpful. It'll, oh yeah, it'll make it easier. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is a good change. Yeah. Yes. Instead okay. of people accidentally stealing buffs. 
Yes. Ardent Sensor's passive now grants assists even when applied by healing a full healthy ally. Okay. Does anybody use Ardent Sensor? I do all the... I don't. I lied. I have lied. Yeah, and I'm then lying. we have three new skins coming. The Jurassic Park series of skins will be the released. G Jurassic World will be <laughs> released coinciding with the movie. <laughs> the movie. Um, how do you feel about these? Uh, I actually think that it's pretty lazy when they put so many skins in one splash art. Like, it looks cool, but at the same time, like, it just doesn't do it for me. Oh. I think the skins all look pretty good. Um, in game, they look kind of meh. Yeah. But Renekton's is kind of whatever, in my opinion, because it. I feel like Renekton looks like is that. basically just a color. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just a shader. Um, I think uh, Cho'gath actually looks legit, like yeah. as Cho'gath, and Anivia actually being quite different as she's not a bird and more of a pterodactyl now <laughs> is kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, um, we'll see these come into shape actually as they finish up the skins. Hopefully, and hopefully they look a little bit better and a little bit nicer, a little bit sexier, a little bit tauter, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, but that's 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 the patch. That's 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 the patch notes. Patch five eleven. That's uh, that's the notes. That's the patch. That's uh, what's going on. Um, if you're watching this live right now with us, obviously thank you for joining us. Very cool of you to do that. If you want to catch the next patch notes um, while it is live, I will schedule the event, and you can see when the event will be scheduled for. This one was technically one day um, after when we would typically probably do it, but only one day. No no big no big shimismo there, and uh, yeah. That's that's the patch. If you're watching this post and you made it to the end, we yeah, love you for it. We love you for it because that means you're super cool, and your mom said so too. And that's patch. Any departing words, Scott? Uh, the patch can be summed up like we started. It's the change. It's changes, but not the changes that we were looking for. True. I really do look forward to the next patch. Let us know what you guys. Think about this patch and hopefully the next patch down below in the comments and i guess that's it for us and we'll just see all of you guys later later guys